Hi all, I am Nitesh Goyal and welcome back to our channel Hammer for Analytics. In this video tutorial, we will be studying about it how we can set up a elastic job in Microsoft Azure or it is or you can say that how we can run jobs from different DB onto another DB. That is the main role of the elastic job in SEO. So let's not waste the time and start with it. So first of all, we will have to create two databases for over here. The first one will be required for job and the other one will be that target DB. So let's start with the job DB first. So here I am providing the resource group as elastic job and database name as let's say job db01 and since I don't have any server yet so let's create a job db server job server 001 and let's then create the admin Okay, so it's done and let's go to networking. Just one more thing over here that we need to remember is whenever you are trying to create a job DB or setting up a database for running the elastic jobs from SEO, this configuration must be at least S0, that is minimum 10 DPUs are required for a job database. So let's move on with it, go and tags if I say let's say ML and analytics. Let's create it. In the meantime, this job db is created. Let's create a target db as well. Click on add. Let's name it as uh, for its right resource group is B ML for analytics. Database name be MLDB01. Let's create a different server for this one. Let's say ML server 01. And then let's give the master or the admin username a little bit different. Let's say Nitesh G. Earlier it was just Nitesh. And let's enter the password. Click OK. Now for the target DB, it is not mandatory to be, to be S0, you can even select the basic plan having only two DTs because we are just executing the jobs on it. However, the DB which is executing the jobs or the on which the elastic agent will be deployed should have S0 over here in the configuration. So let's move on and create this one. Let's put some tags over here and create. This may take some time for creation. Let's in the meantime let's open the SSMS. So our job PB is deployed now. So let's create an elastic agent over it. So let's search for elastic. Here is a job agent, elastic job agent. And before creating this job agent, I want to show you that what is currently present in the DB. So let's connect this one. And yes, one more thing that you must remember while working on this is that while working on this thing like elastic jobs or creating a setting up a db for the elastic jobs you must remember one thing that is the current db that you are on which you will be deploying this elastic job should only be vacant there shouldn't be any kind of data because when i will be using it as an elastic job agent then this service will automatically create few tables and few stored procedures for you in that database so make sure whenever you are creating the elastic job agent or setting up elastic job agent on a database it must have the configuration of s0 at the minimum that is 10 DTUs and that database should be empty. So let's name it as last job 
0, 1. Substitution this and let's configure database. Let's select the server. Our job server is job server 0, 0, 1. Here is the database that I will be selecting. So let's click on OK and create. As you can see, initially there is no tables in it. Well, once this service is deployed, that is our server, uh, I would say job, elastic job agent is deployed on that server, there will be few tables as well as some stored procedures. And the good thing is our target DB is also created now. So let's connect with that and open it up in SSMS. So where is the server name? Let's go to this. Connect, put it like this, username hg and password. Just like the job server, we will have to add our client IP in it just so that we can access the things. So let's click on save. So it's done. So let's just go cancel and connect. Let's go back and check what is the status of this. So guys, this may take a moment. So I will be skipping this part and just come back to you when it is created. Okay, so it is created now. So let's go to the resource. As you can see, our Elastic Job agent is being deployed on job server 001 and the database it is using is job db001. So once if I go over here, and refresh this tables contain. We will be able to see many tables over here and in the programmability if I go and check stored procedures there is a large list of stored procedures as well. And we will be using these stored procedures to create our job that will be targeting or will be doing some action over our target DB that is this one. So let's go and create the things that we need to do. So let's click over here, a new query. So these are the first commands that we'll be running. This is the thing to increase the security of your database. Uh, by enabling master key encryption, it makes sure that whatever the key is being created in this database at later point, those will be encrypted with AES-256, which is a which is one of the best encryptions at present time. So make sure to do this to increase the security. Then we are creating two scoped credentials. What do I mean by scoped credentials? Scoped credentials are like, for example, this is my job DB. And at any point of time, if I want to connect to this server, let's say ML server 01, then these job scoped credentials will come in action. So since I am saying, that I will be using these to connect to this server. Thus, we will have to create entries corresponding to this in this server as well. So let's first of all create them over here. We'll select them and execute. And all the commands have executed successfully. So before we move on, I want to explain one thing. This job execute red, I will be using this uh, to execute the jobs that we will be creating let's say create a table, if I want to create a new table on our target DB, then I will be passing this credential. And this credential will only be used to refresh this complete database server. So that while, whenever I'm executing any job using this, I will be making sure that the database is refreshed before executing any kind of command. For example, if I'm trying to create a table, let's say ML for analytics, and if I haven't, and it is already present in that database and I haven't run the refresh over there, then when I will be trying to run the command only using this without doing the refresh, it will throw me an error. So it's best to do the refresh using the master key credentials. And these master key credentials will be created in the master database of the target server. 
So let's go and create them. So these are the credentials that we are using over here. As you can see, I am also creating a login for job exit credential, and that is not an issue over here. Reason being, these execution credentials are or the logins are created automatically on the server level, not on the database level. However, when we create a user, it is being created at the DB level. So even if I if I would have ran it by selecting this database, these commands would have executed successfully. So let's go and execute them. Now, what we have done is like I have created this and this and login for job cred. Though I need to create a user as well for this so that I can provide it the details like what kind of actions is it can perform on our target DB, like what kind of accesses I will be granting over it or to it. So let's go and do that as well. New query. First of all, I am creating a user for it with the same name, get this job exit thread. So let's run this one. And by doing the this these two commands, I will be providing this user alter and create table execution access commands like it by while using these users or doing the login with the job exit thread the user map to it will be able to alter any kind of table or create a new table in the target db corresponding to a schema dbo so let's run these as well so this covers the basic thing so let's move on with creating the new jobs in the job db so now we have to create our jobs or you can say the server groups to execute the jobs so what we will be doing over here is we will be using these commands to do that so what it will do is create a server group using these stored procedure present over here and if i add any kind of server in this server group then we will be targeting those server groups so if any job is being created or executed using this server group then that job will execute on all the servers being mentioned in this server group for our case we will be targeting only the ml server 01 that is our target db or the target server over here and as i mentioned earlier we are providing refresh credential name as target master trend it will enable the refresh of our target database or all the databases in our target server so let's execute these and they have executed successfully so what i am doing over here is i am creating a job or the label of the job as create table ml4 analytics and i will be using it to create a new table in the target tv ml4 analytics and by using the sort procedure sp add job step here it was sp add job i am adding the steps of the jobs now that is if the table ml4 analytics does not exist then create a table ML4 analytics with these two columns partner ID and partner rings in it and both having the normal values and here are the credentials for the executing the job these are the ones that we created over here so these will be used for executing this job and the server group is over here that we created like this one and we have already executed this so let's, so let's do that It says the command completed successfully. However, that is a bit wrong over here. Reason being, uh, even if it says completed, in many cases things does not get completed. So or we always have to check the status of our job. So let's go and check the status of our job using this one. So let's click on execute. As you can see, it is saying wait, waiting for retries. That means it, some error has happened over here. So let's see what is the failure message. So this is the failure message. Let's copy it and see what is the failure message is. It says client I, client with IP address. This 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 is not allowed to access the server. This is the client IP or the IP address of our job TV. 
and that is not allowed to access our target DB. So we will have to that add that IP into our target DB. So let's go to the target DB now. That is MLDB01. Go to set fire server firewalls. Let's create a job role name. Let's say job db 1 Start IP and I IP will be same because we don't have any range over here. So let's click on save. And now the point over here is that you cannot, this execution automatically does not stop. So we have to mark it cancel or we have to manually stop this execution for that we use this command. This is the job execution ID that we will be providing over here. So let's run this. And if I check the active ones, so there is no entry for the active ones. And if I let's say let's remove this one and run it again. Then we can see the status of the life cycle is cancelled now, which was earlier waiting for re retry. Since we have added the IP now, so let's retry this one. Let's click on execute. So guys, this is it. As we can see that the table is now created in our target DB after running this command, of or you can say after resolving the error of the IP. And this is it for this video. And Hope you liked it. Just please stay tuned and in the coming videos, I will be adding a lot more demos related to Microsoft Azure. So I hope you keep learning and keep moving forward. Please do subscribe, comment and like this video. Thank you guys. Have a nice day.